the serene sky, limitlessly expansive, is compared to the absolute truth. The living entities are truths manifested in relation with the modes of material nature. The deep, bluish cloud covers only an insignificant portion of the limitless sky, and this fractional covering is compared to the quality of ignorance or forgetfulness of the real nature of the living being. A living entity is as pure as the limitless sky. He becomes covered by the cloud of forgetfulness, however, in his tendency for enjoying the material world. Because of this quality, called tamas, ignorance, he considers himself different from the absolute whole and forgets his purity, which is like that of the clear sky. This forgetfulness gives rise to separatism in false ego. Thus the forgetful living entities, individually and collectively, make sounds like thundering clouds. I am this, it is ours, or it is mine. This mood of false separatism is called the quality of rajas, and it gives rise to a creative force for separate lordship over the mode of tamas. The flash of lightning is the only beam of hope that can lead one to the path of knowledge, and therefore it is compared to the mode of sattva, or goodness. Unless I, there is no mind. So, oh, this is the disease. 
and Krishna God has rise to cure this disease. It's cured. To cure this illusion. Uh, what is that? When I understand that I have no existence without Krishna, I am part and parcel of Krishna. In that sense, I am Krishna also. Uh, that, my, that means to understand Krishna's identification. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Dive Sarupa Nitya Krishna Das. Because I am part and parcel of Krishna, then what is my duty? To serve Krishna. There is no other duty. Any other duty I manufacture, that is illusion. That is my any duty I manufacture. Uh, so under illusion, I am manufacturing duties. This is called condition and life. So best name is advice that Okila Bandha Bhutta, if people are under illusion, uh, I and mine, so just try to get them liberated from this illusion. sky, or the all-pervading absolute truth, Brahman, is non-different from the covered portion of the sky, but simultaneously the whole sky is different from the fractional portion that is liable to be covered by the dark cloud. The cloud, accompanied by thunder and lightning, cannot possibly cover the limitless sky. Therefore, the absolute truth, which is compared to the whole sky, is simultaneously one with the manifested living being and different from him. The living being is only a sample of the absolute truth and is prone to be covered by the circumstantial cloud of ignorance. of philosophers, generally known as the monists and the dualists. The monist believes in the oneness of the absolute truth and the living entity, but the dualist believes in the separate identities of the living being and the absolute truth. Above these two classes of philosophers is the philosophy of achintya bheda bheda tattva, or the truth of simultaneous oneness and difference. This philosophy was propounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his explanation of the Vedanta Sutras. The Vedanta is the medium of philosophical interpretations, and thus the Vedanta cannot be the absolute property of any particular class of philosopher. A sincere seeker of the absolute truth is called a Vedantist. Veda means knowledge. Any department of knowledge is called a part of the Vedic knowledge, and Vedanta means the ultimate conclusion of all branches of knowledge. As philosophy is called the science of all sciences, Vedanta is the ultimate philosophy of all philosophical speculations. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahe Anna. Radha Krishna 
कॉम्बिनेशन आप श्री चैतन्य चैतन्य महाप्रु मीन्स राधा एंड कृष्ण कॉम्बाइन इन द बिगिनिंग देर इज कृष्ण एंड देन कृष्ण डिवाइडेड इंटू टू राधा एंड कृष्ण एंड देन अगेन कॉम्बाइन दैट इज श्री चैतन्य राधा कृष्ण प्रणय विजिति अल्लाहिनी शक्ति अस्मात्मी देह भेद चैतन्यार्थ प्रकटमुना तय चैकमा सिद्धांत कृष्ण इज वन देर इज नो राइव विथ कृष्ण गॉड इज वन एकब्रह्म द्वितीय नाथ देर कैन नॉट बी मेनी गॉड सो वेन गॉड कृष्ण वॉन्ट्स टू एंजॉय इज प्लेज एंड पोटेंसी दैट इज राधा सो ही मैनिफेस्ट इन सेल्फ मैनिफेस्ट इज एनर्जी इज एनर्जी एंड ही There is no difference. Shakti, Shakti, Matayo, Abheda. The Shastra says Shakti and the Shakti Mat. When one who possesses the Shakti, Shakti means power, potency. They are equal. There is no difference. Just like uh, the sun. Sun is. the power and the sun sign is the power so there is heat in the sun and there is heat also in the sun sign there is light in the sun and there is light in the sun sign also therefore qualitatively they are uh, one so by heat and light is concerned But the temperature of the sun and the temperature of the sun sign may be different. May be not actually it is different. This is the basic principle of all philosophy. Achinta Veda Ved. Achinta means inconceivable. Veda means different, and Abheda means non-different. Uh, the whole situation, uh, the one is there, God, but He has expanded Himself in different way. He got bhushan. So that is described here. Krishna Chaitanya Sangam, Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, He has expanded Himself as Guru. Uh, the guru the spiritual master he is also sri chaitanya mahap sarshad haritte na samasta shastre rupta in all the shastras guru is accepted as krishna sarshad haritte sarshad means direct this guy like you offers your Devotion, respect to Guru. So that respect is offered to Krishna. Guru also does not think himself that he is Krishna, but he collects the devotional services of the disciples to offer to Krishna. This is the process. We cannot approach Krishna directly. we should approach through guru
state imposes upon its citizens scorching taxes in various forms. Income tax, sales tax, land tax, terminal tax, excise tax, customs tax, and so many other taxes. But in due course, when the taxes accumulate into a large sum of money, they are utilized for the welfare of the citizens in various ways. Nonetheless, sometimes it happens that the benefits of the taxes fall like rains on stone-hearted men in the state who are unable to utilize the money properly and who squander it for sense gratification. The common man supposes the unequal distribution of rain to represent nature's wrath for our sinful acts. There is truth in this. Thus, to have an equal distribution of state-raised taxes, the citizens need to be scrupulously honest and virtuous. They should be honest in the payment of taxes to the state and should have honest representatives to look over the administration. In the modern setup of democratic states, the citizens can have no cause for grievances because the whole administration is conducted by the people themselves. If the people themselves are dishonest, the administrative machinery must be corrupt. Although a damned government of the people may be given a good or fancy name, if the people are not good, they cannot have good government, regardless of which party governs the administration. Therefore, Good character in the consciousness of the mass of people is the first principle necessary for a good government and equal distribution of wealth. In ancient days, the kings were taught lessons in political philosophy by ideal teachers, and the citizens from village to village were taught the principles of self-realization according to the Vedic codes for both the material and the spiritual upliftment of society. Therefore, the citizens were God-conscious and honest in their dealings, and the kings were responsible for the welfare of the state. The same basic principles are accepted in the democratic governments of the present day, for the irresponsible party of the people is always voted out of power and must yield to the responsible party for a better government. In the cosmic administration, there is only one party, which consists of the servants of God, and the responsible deities of the various planets maintain the cosmic laws in terms of the orders of the Supreme Lord. But the people suffer on account of their own folly. And what is that folly? In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that people should perform yajnas, or sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. The Supreme is all-pervading. Therefore, people must learn to perform yajnas to satisfy the all-pervading Supreme Truth. There are different yajnas prescribed for different ages, and in the present age of iron industry, the yajna that enlightens the mind of the masses for God consciousness is recommended. This process of yajna is called the Sankirtana yajna, or mass congregation for invoking man's lost spiritual consciousness. 
As soon as this movement is taken up through spiritual singing, dancing and feasting, the people will automatically become obedient and honest. Obedience is the first law of discipline. The people have become disobedient to the laws of God and therefore neither rain nor wealth is equally distributed. A man who is ultimately disobedient cannot have any good qualification. When disobedient leaders lead the disobedient people, the whole atmosphere of the administration becomes polluted and full of dangers, as when a blind man leads several other blind men. The state taxes, therefore, should be spent to build the character of the people in general. That will bring happiness to the citizens of the state. are saying don't there is no God who so don't care for God. We are everyone God. But Maya, the police force is there, kicking on the face. Uh, and they are subjected to so many tribulations, miserable conditions of life, especially birth, death, old age and disease. Now you don't care for God. So why don't you stop your death? You stop your death. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mrittu sarva harascha aham. To the rascals and the demons, I am death. I take away everything. Sarva haram. Sarva haram means these rascals are trying to possess so many things. Cars, motor cars, sky cover building, bank balance, big family, big friends, big empire, and so many things. But when death comes, uh, he cannot protect himself. What to speak of protecting other things? So he is under full control, the demons. And every moment he is under control. Suppose I have got money, I can eat so much. But as soon as you eat little more, immediately you are under control. You cannot eat for three days in digestion. Immediately. And still the rascal says that I am not controlled. If there is little pain here, he immediately becomes very dark and very dark. And still he says, I am not controlled. And I am God. He does not know what is the meaning of God. God is never controlled by anyone. That is God. That is the definition of God. If you are God, then why you are being controlled? Because there are skills, demands, foolishly speaking something nonsense. But we should know that God means controller. He is not controlled. And when God was present on this planet, He showed what kind of God He is. Prithana Sagna, Vinasaya Chaddushki. Anyone, any demon who tried to be, imitate God, they are all killed. All killed. The Kansar, His only policy was to kill Krishna. As soon as Krishna comes, kill him. So many friends he made. Krishna happened to be his sister's son. So he imprisoned his sister and brother-in-law so that he may beget children. But in my front, I must remain. As soon as his children, child is born, I shall kill. So this is the policy of the demons. Therefore, Indrari Bakulam Lokam, when people become the inhabitants of all different planets, they become very much perturbed on account of this demonic. In this Kali Yuga especially, the demons are so large in number that people are actually in harassment. Every year they are presenting taxation bills. 
and where from the taxation will come the taxation will come from your pocket and my pocket they will charge income tax and the store keepers will increase the value of commodity so you have to pay oh you are complaining things are going high price but why because the demands are levying taxes it is not the scarcity of goods there is sufficient commodity sufficient but they have made an economic plan just like in your country the government say that you don't produce more why if one can produce krishna has given food you have to simply little work and produce your food but in order to keep the balance of price they say don't produce why not produce if actually we produce food stuff in the ordinary way then we can produce food stuff so much that 10 times of the whole population of the world can be paid 10 times there is no question of scarcity or poverty there is no question we create these demands they create you have no experience i have got experience on some of the indians were present in 1942 the government created artificial famine artificial famine. the government began to purchase the at that time the war was going on so mr charchill's policy was that keep the people in scarcity and they will voluntarily come and become soldiers that was the point they have no money so and the another when you open yes you become a soldier you get so much money people love to poverty would go that was the policy so this policy was executed the government began to purchase rice and commodities which are daily necessities any price any price they can offer because the currency is their hand they can print the so called papers 100 dollars and pay you. and you become say so i got 100 dollars but it is a piece of paper the cheating is from the government why the people will not learn how to cheat so this is going on this is called demonic demand means for their own sense satisfaction they are prepared to do anything wrong We should always know that God is always kind to us. Despite our gross disobedience to the laws of God's nature, the Lord is kind enough to look after our maintenance. Water is one of the most important items for our maintenance because without water, we can neither produce food grains nor quench our thirst. Water is also required very liberally for many other purposes. Thus the Lord has preserved water on 3/4 of the globe and has made it salty to preserve it. Salty water does not decompose and that is the arrangement of providence. The Lord has engaged the powerful sun 
to evaporate the water of planets like Earth and distill it into clear water in the clouds and then stock it on the peaks of mountains as we stock water in overhead tanks for later distribution. Part of the stock of water is refrigerated into ice so that it will not flood the earth for no good purpose. The ice melts gradually throughout the year, flows down through the great rivers and glides down to the sea again for preservation. Therefore, the laws of God's nature are neither blind nor accidental, as men with a poor fund of knowledge conclude. Behind the laws of nature is the living brain of God, just as there is always a lawmaker behind all the laws of the state. It does not matter whether or not we see the lawmaker behind the common laws, we must admit that there is a lawmaker. Matter can never work automatically without a living hand, and therefore we must admit the existence of God, the supreme living being, behind the laws of nature. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita that nature works under His superintendence. Nature is only a power, and behind the power is the powerhouse and a brain, just as behind electrical power there is an electrical powerhouse, where everything is conducted by the brain of the resident engineer. The material nature works so nicely, and not blindly, because of the superintendence of the supreme, powerful God. In the Vedic hymns, the Atarva Veda, the same thing is confirmed. It is only under the superintendence of God that all the natural laws are conducted. The Lord distributes His mercy in the form of rains on the scorched earth at times of dire necessity. He supplies rain when we are practically on the verge of death for want of water. God is merciful, undoubtedly, but He bestows His mercy on us when we need it most. This is so because we forget God as soon as we obtain this mercy. We should therefore remember the mercy of God constantly if we want to avoid distress. We are eternally related with Him, despite the state of forgetfulness. The Bhagavad Gita confirms that the laws of nature are stringent because they are conducted by three different modes. But one who surrenders unto the Lord overcomes the stringency of nature easily. Daivi hyesha gunamayi mamamaya duratyaya ma meva ye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite. The Lord says, This divine energy of mine consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. The Bhagavad Gita is said, Raso Hamma Sukhantiya I am the taste of water. When you are drinking water and it's fine. So as soon as you taste water, how nice it is, you can immediately see God, Krishna. Oh, here is Krishna. Here is Krishna. How do you say that? Can you show me Krishna? You can see. Here is the process. You adopt it. You taste water. And when you enjoy the taste, that taste is Krishna. Krishna says, I am this taste. Then what is the difficulty to see Krishna? There is no difficulty. The people say, can you show me God? God is everywhere. In every moment, in every state. You do not like to see Him. That is the difficulty. Raso Amma Sukham Pravasmi I am the sunshine and moonshine. Who has not seen sunshine? Everyone has seen. From the very morning we see sunshine. And at night also when there is darkness, there is no sun, we see moonshine. The sunshine, moonshine, Krishna says, Pravasmi Sashishurjaya. 
as soon as I see the sun sign or moon sign, I see God. What is the difficulty? Sab dokhe, when there is some sound, rumbling sound in the sky, khe, khe means sky. Krishna said, I am the sound. So as soon as you hear even the sound of aeroplane, that is also God. Punravana Pritipyancha, when you smell a nice flower, that smell is Krishna. So you can remember immediately Krishna. So to remember Krishna, there are so many opportunities. But we don't want to remember Krishna. That is the Therefore, it is said that Janma Guiham Bhagavatu. Janma, God's appearance. God is appearing every moment, everywhere. Here is just in front of Radha Krishna. Personally, he is present. But others will see a stone because he has not purified his eyes. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as soon as he sees, he fails down. He is unconscious. Oh, yes, so you have to purify to see God. God is present everywhere. You have to ask anybody, can you show me God? Have you seen God? This question so sometimes men. And what is the difficulty to see God? You don't like to see God. That is the difficulty. Otherwise, there is no difficulty. So, Janma, Janma Guiham Bhagavato. And Bhagavad Gita also, Bhagavan says that Janma Karma Medhipyam Jujanati Tata. One has to learn. One has to learn the science how to see God. Uh, that is Bhakti Yoga. Uh, one who is not in Bhakti Yoga, he cannot see God. Even God is present before him. season is but a temporary show. It looks very pleasant, but we must remember that it will not last. Similarly, there are persons who undergo severe austerities for some material gain, but those who are seen avoid this. Severe austerities for temporary gains are simply a waste of time and energy. Material loss and gain are destined in accordance with the formation of each particular body. There are 8,400,000 species of life, and each type of body is destined to enjoy and suffer in accordance with its particular formation. The bodily enjoyments and sufferings of a wealthy man's son are different from those of a poor man's son. 
Although no one undergoes severe austerities to obtain distress, it comes upon us uncalled. Similarly, the happiness we are destined to enjoy will come upon us even without our desires. Even though we may be able to avoid the stress and artificially enjoy some material happiness by temporary achievements, this represents no factual gain in life. Our duty is to achieve permanent happiness and eternal life. And it is for that purpose only, for the ultimate gain, that we should undertake all sorts of penances and austerities. This ultimate gain is possible to achieve in the human form of life. Permanent happiness is possible when one is free from material sources of happiness. For a continuation of material bondage means continuation of the threefold miseries. Human life is meant for ending these miseries. We should not try to be beautiful like seasonal flowers or greenery that flourish in the rainy season but are weary in the winter. To be enlivened by the clouds of ignorance overhead and to enjoy the sight of temporary greenery is not at all desirable. One should try to live in the unlimited clear sky, over flooded with the rays of the sun and moon. That is what we actually desire, a life of freedom in eternity, complete knowledge and a blissful atmosphere is the heart's desire of an enlightened soul. We should undertake all sorts of penances and austerities to attain that permanent source of happiness. When you are posted by your John, 
how can i believe that you spoke this philosophy of bhagavad gita 400 million years ago to the sun god the krishna says that yes you are also present there because you are my constant company but you have forgotten i do so uh, uh, we do not forget things so long the form continues <coughs> but when the form changes Every night we have got this experience. Our form is lying on the bed, but I am dreaming in a different form. I am flying in the sky and forgetting that my real form is lying on the bed. We forget. We forget that I am American or I am the son of such and such gentleman. Everything forgot. Every night we have got this. form is for what then everything is for we refer to the context As there are seasonal changes within a year, so there are changing ages in the duration of the manifest cosmic world. These changing ages are called yugas or periods. As there are the three modes of nature, there are also various ages dominated by these three modes. The period dominated by the mode of goodness is called Satya Yuga. The period of passion is called Treta Yuga. The period of mixed passion and ignorance is called Dvapara Yuga. And the period of darkness and ignorance, the last period, is called Kali Yuga, or the age of quarrel. The word Kali means quarrel. Kali Yuga is compared to the rainy season because many difficulties in life are experienced during this damp season. In Kali Yuga, there is a dearth of proper guidance. One may take guidance in the evening from the stars and moon, but in the rainy season, the light of guidance comes from insignificant glowworms. The real light in life is the Vedic knowledge. The Bhagavad Gita affirms that the purpose of the Vedas is to know the all-powerful personality of Godhead. But in this age of quarrel, there are quarrels even over the point of the existence of Godhead. In the godless civilization of the age of quarrel, there are numberless societies, religious communities, and religious sects, most of them trying to banish God from religion. Glowworms want to be prominent in the absence of the sun and the stars. And these small groups following various religious conceptions 
are like glowworms trying to be prominent before the eyes of the ignorant mass of people. There are now a number of self-made incarnations people follow without authority from the Vedic literatures. And there is regular competition between one incarnation's group and another's. The Vedic knowledge comes in a tradition from the spiritual master through the chain of disciplic succession and the knowledge must be acquired through this chain without deviation. In the present age of quarrel, the chain has been broken here and there, and thus the Veda is now interpreted by unauthorized men who have no realization. The so-called followers of the Vedas deny the existence of God, as in the darkness of a cloudy evening, the glowworms deny the existence of the moon and the stars. Saner people should not be waylaid by such unscrupulous men. The Bhagavad Gita is the summary of all Vedic knowledge because it is spoken by the same personality of Godhead who imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahma, the first created being in the universe. Srimad Bhagavatam was especially spoken for the guidance of the people of this age, which is darkened by the cloud of ignorance. But the so-called scholars and politicians, they misinterpret in a different way and mislead the people. That is going on. Therefore, uh, in spite of Bhagavad Gita being read all over the world for the last two hundred years, not a single person became a devotee of Krishna. This is the defect. So let us try to understand Krishna through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as we have repeatedly said, through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu you understand Krishna and spread this cult all over the world. People are suffering for want of knowledge of Krishna. So this moment especially uh, meant uh, to establish the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that uh, you become, every one of you, you become a guru. Uh, how to become guru? Jare dakho tare kaho Krishna hoti. Simply that qualification is sufficient. Don't adulterate the Krishna Upadesh. Simply present what Krishna says as it is. Then every one of you will become a guru. Don't adulterate. I think, in my opinion, this nonsense thing should be given. We should always be aware that we are insignificant creature. Our opinion and thinking has no value. 
this should be the first principle. Why should you give opinion on the words of Krishna? Are you more uh, authoritative person than Krishna? This is foolishness. Uh, to try to become more than Krishna, there are so many rascals. Uh, the present that now we have advanced, we know more than Krishna. So be saved from these rascals. Then you will understand Krishna, uh, and through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, you will understand what is the position of Krishna, what is your relationship with Krishna. What is the ultimate goal of life? These things will be uh, clearly exhibited. And Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is written for this purpose. So that a person who is serious about Krishna consciousness may understand Krishna through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is one. You cannot jump over Krishna consciousness without going through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And to go through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu means to go through the six Goshari. This is Parampara system. Therefore, Nartam Das Thakur says, Echaya Goshari Jar Tarmi Das. Tasavar Padorenu Mora Panchagras. This is Parampara system. You cannot jump over. You must go through the Parampara system. You have to approach through your spiritual master to the Goswamis, and through the Goswamis, you will have to approach Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have to approach Krishna. Either way. Uh, therefore, Northam Das Thakur says, Eichaya Gosai Jar Tarumita. We are servant of servant. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. Gopi Bhattu Padakamalayu Dasu Dasu Dasanu Das. The more you become servant of the servant, the more you are perfect. 